Well, good Thursday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, uh, I need you guys to bear with me. My voice is bad. Um, I feel like I have smoked like 12 packs of cigarettes all at one time, and my throat is raw, so just... Just give a brother a little bit of a break here. So <coughs> we are on the cusp of Memorial Weekend here where literally the year is almost half over. Before you know it, we'll be at training camp. And, of course, the usual things that happen, of course, every offseason, the Cowboys stink, they're chokers, and they've done nothing in free agency. They're the worst team in football. Dak Prescott shouldn't make any money. Um, have I missed anything? Jerry Jones is an idiot. Yet, somehow, they end up winning 12 games three years in a row. I don't know how they do that. I guess they do it with smoke and mirrors. But... One thing that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm changing my tune because I have beat down the Cowboys for lack of movement like we all have um, this offseason. But they always seem to at least have players better than you think. We always see all the rankings there that tell you that Dak Prescott, you know, he's not a top 10 quarterback or the Cowboys stink. But somehow they're always a team that seems to be leading or in the top tier of points every year. Um, and they end up making the playoffs. The thing that's kind of crazy is, what if the Cowboys know their players a little bit better than maybe some of the people on the outside? For example, I remember when teams were, where the talking heads were giving us so much flack that we didn't re-sign Randy Gregory. Oh, my God, how could the Cowboys not do that? And we heard Stephen Jones say, literally, that, you know, production-wise, Torrance Armstrong is right there. And damn if he wasn't. He actually played better than Randy Gregory did. And so now we're in the same situation where you're constantly seeing that Cowboys, you know, important starters were let go and not replaced. But what if these players are actually on the roster? Now, I met Jalen Tolbert his rookie year. We actually gave him a plaque that he loved when we first got our CNC machine. And he looked like a wiry, wiry, you know, young man. I don't know if you guys have noticed how much it looks like he has gotten his man body, how he looks more muscular and fit. Now, we know we got rid of Michael Gallup, and, you know, we'll be getting in another week in a couple of days um, $9.5 million of money. We've heard speculation that the Cowboys might try and trade Brandon Cooks um, or cut him to get some extra cap relief, which would be stupid because you need more weapons. But what if... What if Jalen Tolbert, they look at him and they say he's ready to take another step? He was playing actually better football than Michael Gallup was last year. I know that doesn't mean a lot, but he had very limited snaps. This was um, from yesterday after practice, listening to Jalen Tolbert. I actually like what I see and what I hear from him. Let's go. How has Dak helped you build that confidence in, in this specific offseason? Uh, I mean, every time he asks to throw or do anything, uh, whether it's go eat crawfish or, you know, <laughs> go to his house and chill, Look, the go throw, uh, I'm there. And like I said, we talk, talk almost every day. Uh, we talk about MLB, the show, video games, whatever it is. And so uh, having a quarterback that believes in you and, and is a great person like Dak is uh, to, to kind of take you under his wing is special. And so knowing that I have a quarterback like that uh, that believes in me and knows what I'm capable of doing uh, makes me want to work even harder, you know, to not let him down as well so uh having having him on my, in my corner along with brandon cooks as well is is big for me and like i said i love those guys to death and i'm gonna do what i can for them has he put you on babysitting duty not yet <laughs> <laughs> uncle JT? yeah uncle jt huh how do y'all bond best when away from the game of football I mean, you talked about you know video games you know eating crawfish but uh, what do y'all do to really bond the best uh Really just spend time together. Uh, I think that the time together, whether, whether it is talking baseball games or uh, going to Mavs games, Stars games, whatever it is, I think uh, just that time apart and, you know, outside of the football field, you're, you're growing, you're learning more about him. Like, I mean, we went at eight one time and it was me, him, and SJ and his MJ. And so, like, we're just sitting there talking about everything under the moon. And so as you learn, you know, him and he learns me, 
you understand a person's why and why they're doing it and what they do it for. And so you're continuing to grow and continue to understand uh, that it's, it's bigger than yourself. And so, like I said, I mean, having a quarterback like that, and obviously Brandon has taken me under his wing. I uh, went out there to Oregon with him and understanding, you know, why he does it, you know, hanging out with him every day and his family is special. And so uh, for them to, to trust in me, to, to bring me around those environments and continuing to spend time with me, obviously, like I said, it's special for me. And like I said, I'm going to do what I can to make sure that I hold my end of the bargain and I, I hold it very well. And like I say, I'm confident in myself. So now, like I say, I'm just having fun with it. <laughs> You're talking about confidence. You mentioned it again there. And, and Dak was talking about confidence with you and, and Brandon. Was that the biggest hit you took as a rookie? Did, did you really take a hit to your confidence? And was that kind of tough for you to work through for a while there? Uh, yeah, uh, my rookie year, I, I think I had lost every bit, almost all of my confidence. Uh, coming off of, you know, a hamstring injury and OTAs and then trying to catch up and then just, you know, moving around, playing every spot. I think I was thinking way more than I should instead of just going out there and having fun and knowing that I'm, I belong here, that uh, I'm valuable at, at this level and can play very high at this level. And so uh, that's something that I had to build back up uh, throughout my rookie year and then throughout the offseason last year. And so, like I said, it, it's completely different now. It's a 180, so I'm confident. I'm just having fun, doing what I can, uh, growing, taking care of my body and continuing to uh, show my value to not only my teammates but the coaches as well. Was that maybe your only time as an athlete where you felt self-conscious or you felt like, I mean, before you had the ability and it's like, I, I belong and everyone can see that. Is that the only time maybe you've ever really been like self-conscious and gone, well, what what are these guys seeing in me because I'm not this guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think I ever thought that I wasn't the guy. I just was uh, it, one of the hardest things for me. Uh, I told my coach this coming out of college. One of the hardest things was, you know, I went to a small school, so I was the best player on the team for – Four, four, three, three, four years, and so when I got here, obviously I, I wasn't that, and so uh, trying to to wrap my head around the opposite side of how things were, obviously uh, played a part in it as well, and so me. Um, you know, rebuilding my confidence started with me going back to, to my college during the senior ball and just watching college tape and seeing, you know, what I did in college and understanding, like, I'm that guy and I, I can be that guy at this level. And I, you know, just had to build myself back up from there. And so uh, I think that was one of the things my rookie year that I went through, uh, along with, like I say, just coming off the injury and just trying to play catch up was, was hard. There you go. Yeah, I, I like what I hear when I talk to I like what I hear from Jalen Tolbert. Um, you know, he's had a few injuries, the hamstring issue and things like that. But actually having CD Lamb not around may have given a player like him more reps and more time to actually work out with Dak and things. And maybe this is the breakout year for him. Um, we always want to look at somebody coming in from the outside and being able to plug them in and that instantly that they're going to end up being great and doing what they were doing elsewhere. But sometimes you're better off somebody who may not have as much talent but knows exactly what you're doing. Because, see, invariably, in any play, any play, you got 11 moving parts. If one part does not know the assignment or one part makes a mistake or one part is not in the place that they're supposed to be, that play can fail. And it can go the other way and be seven points for somebody else. And having Jalen Tolbert now, you know, the first year his eyes were wide open and the whole spotlight. And from what I'm told, in his first year in college was kind of the same thing before he started coming on. Well, now in the third year, he's getting an opportunity now that um, he's Michael Gallup is gone and he hopefully will grow. And you can definitely see that his body's matured and it sounds like his mind as well. All right, good people. I think I got through this for the most part <coughs> without coughing all over you guys. I appreciate you. Peace.